It's like really effective in the French because it works both against knight d2 and against knight c3 as well. So it's not like your opponent plays knight c3 against this you go bishop to b4, but against knight d2 you can no longer go bishop b4 because there is c3. So I think it's just like a nice way to simplify this opening and get rid of one of your main issues, which is the light squared bishop. So against d4 we'll try uh, to defend the French defense. And against knight c3 we'll go after the fourth nox variation, trying to get rid of the uh, bad French bishop. Gonna play knight d7, knight f6. Yeah, ready to trade everything on e4 if he allows it. And against this move I'm pretty sure I can go h6, he might be looking to take. So just to avoid that I think I'll start with bishop e7. He can take on f7 maybe in that position. Um, I don't know. Okay, just to like keep it simple, I'm gonna take on f3. Getting rid of one of the knights will, yeah, keep it really simple. We develop to d6. Could also just go to e7. I think I'll use that square now. And I'm gonna play like c6. We get sort of a Karo composition. Queen goes to like b6, as I noticed. Actually to a5 now. Idea to meet bishop b2 with bishop a3. As far as we can trade that bishop... Should be pretty comfortable in this structure. And I can just take, play like rook d8. If he goes b4, my queen can swing over. I think I'll just go queen c7. Idea to maybe meet b4 with a5. Not forced to though. Could also consider breaking with c5. Could also play more of like a waiting game. I think I'll break. Yeah. I wanna get the knight to c5. Gonna take, gonna play like a6 if he takes with a knight. Could also just go knight c5. Gonna make this move first. Avoiding like knight b5, which could be potentially annoying. Let's go queen c2. Am I gonna get made at? I don't really think so, but... Uh, just gonna play knight f2, <laughs> just in case. Uh, okay, I think we can go for the trades. I have a pretty balanced position. Not gonna be easy to win, for sure. But uh, yeah, it's pretty balanced. Let's play g3. I think I take once and then I go like queen c5, hitting this pawn. He plays like queen c1, I'm guessing. a4. Looks a bit weakening to me. Let's go a4. Might think about getting the queen there. Just gonna play this move, keep an eye on b3. Also could consider knight g4 ideas at some point. Goes knight e5. Okay, I think we can play like g6. King g7. Okay, on knight d3 I think I like queen d4. Centralizing. Knight e4 now. Moves the queen away. Could go knight c5, trade a pair of knights. I think I like that idea. If he doesn't trade, okay, he goes for it this way. Gonna trade and gonna block the pawns. This could very well turn into a weakness. So I think what my opponent does is pretty risky from a strategic point of view. I play like f6, idea to go e5 eventually. Uh, just king f7, h5 and d5. I think we take with a knight. Also could go pawn takes. Gonna go b6. Mm, okay, I think I can get in even e4. Start this way. I don't think he's <laughs> doing the right thing. But it's still like not an, an easy position to play. I think I should be better, definitely. I'll try to get the knight to c6. Knight d4 next. Yeah, coming into b3. Okay, we managed to flag him also, but the endgame was, uh, was winning. Yeah, I think once I got like queen d4 in, the position should be, uh, yeah, 
really okay, but I wasn't necessarily sure about the opening when he went knight g5. I think I should start bishop d6, yeah. So, so as I was saying, like this will be pretty disastrous <laughs> once he get in, in, gets in this kind of stuff. Not gonna be a fun game. And also, like, I, I kind of disliked this idea as well. Couldn't really see me developing my pieces harmoniously from this position. But turns out I could do this. And then this doesn't really make that much sense. Because if he tries this one, I can, yeah, I'm just queen e7 and I'm like fully developed. So it's a completely different story. So I should have played bishop d6. I went bishop takes on f3 because I couldn't really. Um, yeah, remember, I know a line going bishop d3, knight d7, and then they go knight g5 here. No, they play queen e2, yeah? And after I play knight f6, they go knight g5, and here the move is to actually take on f3. But um, it's a little bit different because now if they take with the queen, the queen has spent a tempo going to e2 in the first place, so perhaps in this version he could have taken with the queen and yeah i mean get a get an improved line like for example let's say he could try out maybe this queen lift and gonna be like trickier for me to castle like just imagine i can't castle because h7 drops and also going g6 is yeah potentially just losing to this kind of tactics so after i took on f3 he took with the knight and went rook e1 which we at least managed to like stabilize and if you got one of those like sort of typical positions after I went for bishop a3, it's always like slightly better for white, but should be pretty solid. Decided to break here. Again, you can play more of like a waiting game. Uh, go a5. Yeah, and just try to play useful moves like h6. I don't know if h6 is really a move that you're supposed to make. But um, yeah, it's more of like a sort of defensive setup. I went c5 here, breaking. I sort of liked my idea. I took and then a6, I think it's important. And I did not really like his queen c2 move in particular. I played this kind of knight f8, which is fine. A little bit overly cautious here, just defending h7 maybe. Went for the trade. Apparently I could consider going rook c8 idea to b5. But what I did was also like very human, I thought. Went queen c5 and at this point I knew he has to play queen c1 and maybe I would have fought b5. Point is that on b4 queen c6 comes with tempo because otherwise if he's able to get c5 this has gotten really in the wrong direction because he gets the um, yeah defended passer. But he has to defend the knight first, so let's play like knight d2, and even this looks actually worse. <laughs> so I think I would have maybe played a5, try to, you know, slow him down a bit, trying to, yeah, defend. So once he got in this a4, it, it looked a bit wrong. Queen b6 is kind of stupid, just should start this way. And yeah, I mean, just solid like I did in the game. One queen b6, knight e5, g6 now, which what was good to like shut down this bishop completely. Once he allowed queen d4, it's like really pleasant for me. And even if let's say he goes into some kind of end games, like there, he cannot go there. F2 drops, my bad. But like, let's just say hypothetically, F2 does not hang. Even this end games are very unpleasant for my opponent with the poor bishop. So, um,. Yeah, if you had like the dark squared bishop, it's like a completely different story. But um, yeah, in in this fashion is yeah not not a fun game definitely. He played queen e two. I went knight c five, which I I don't really love in hindsight. It's just that I was kind of <laughs> having not that much time, so just go like a five b six do something useful. Because why would you like decentralize your own knight? Like it doesn't make any sense. But just to kind of simplify things a bit, I, I play like that in, uh, yeah, in Blitz. So he went queen e5 though, and I missed a tactic like I always do. 
could have taken on b3. If he does go for the trade, we just managed to steal a pawn. And if he does try to take the knight, then this guy remains undefended. And yeah, that is completely winning now. So I was actually just happy to trade queens, fixed his weak pawns, and then the rest was pretty smooth, I would say. Maybe I don't need to trade knights. I could start with f6. But in this position, something that I think I would have liked now, maybe something like knight b8. Idea to bring this knight over to d4. Computer doesn't really love it. Um, went f6. h5 followed by e5. Kind of messed it up a bit. Like I was happy with this position because thinking knight could go there to c6, but look. Looks like he can activate with the king and this is like only move to hold equality now. But it's still like pleasant for me though. How do you pronounce my full name in Romanian? Uh, that could take a while to learn. <laughs> I don't think it's uh, yeah the main topic of the stream. <laughs> we can try to focus on the board, you know, trying to learn this French. So, mm, yeah, he went knight h3 a bit passive, went king e6, and he kind of panicked here. Like, his position is not really that bad in a way that I don't have the most obvious plan ever. But he started creating more and more weaknesses, and I was eventually able to do this maneuver that I had in, while for, that I had in mind for a while. And, yeah, once we've got here, it's pretty much sort of winning f4 was nice and yeah we just collect his remaining pawns pretty much and we win get a black pieces and hopefully we can get a french let's see can we even get like a ford nox or am i asking for too much we get knight c3 d5 and knight f3 so it's the two knights but i think we're gonna get into the ford nox anyways so another perks of playing the ford nox you don't have to deal with the Russian roulette theory. I think that's what this line is called with the two knights against the French. So, so far, everything is standard. This is uh, main theory, knight f6. And now rookie one is, yeah, known to be harmless. Main move, knight g3. Knight d2 also interesting. But whenever they do allow you to trade everything, this generally gives black like an easy uh, way to equality. Mm, okay, I'm, I think I'll play c6 first, waiting to see what he does with the bishop, and I'll just go bishop e7, could also go to d6, I'll just go there, he go like bishop f4 now, does play knight e5, I think I'll try like, uh, a5 is kind of a common move in this structure I've noticed, a4 ideas, they usually play a4 themselves, Queen b6 now and the knight c4 is like queen a6. Yeah. Hitting the knight, rook's coming into d8. Might even break with c5 if he's not like careful. Maybe c5 is idea. Maybe b5. Okay, he goes queen b3. How about b5? Like we don't need to play it, but I'm just wondering. Could also just go knight d7, trade his knight. I think I like that idea. Okay, on knight d7 there's like knight f7. He has a threat. Wow. Big threat knight f7, because then this hangs. So I think we need to play play this. But now it's nice thing about uh, including a5 and a4, because if he goes c4, knight b4 will remain, uh, yeah, a very solid knight. Because with the pawn on a2, he can kick it with like a3. So it's really nice that we got in this fashion. So I have to watch out for knight f7, and yeah, maybe next actually b5 does not look very bad. Might just be grabbing some space on the queen side he does reroute the queen perhaps trying uh, something like that can we still go like b5 try to get some play he will go for it i think looks okay does go queen f3 hitting this pawn Could play bishop f6 expecting some kind of knight g4 yeah i'll go for it expecting this move I don't want to let him take, I think I'll just drop the bishop back. Because if he takes and gets in bishop g5, it could get really ugly. 
So I'll have to drop the bishop. And if knight e5, we might have to repeat. Curry will play like rook f8. Might have to repeat, but I think he'll try to play it for the win. Okay, I'll have to repeat. There's no better move for me. And he tries to go for the c5 square, but... Yeah, it's not that critical. Just play queen b6. And now maybe we can undermine with b4. Because on c4, I think there's like bishop d4. This knight also drops. There's like a threat to double take on c3 and then bishop d4. So he needs to be a bit careful. Maybe he plays knight e4 back. We might have to play like bishop e7 this time. Then he has c4. I have knight f6. I think that's like okay for me. Pawn on d4 might get weak. He does go for this, but I think I can just take and play knight f6. Looks like the simplest. Dealing with the threat against f7. He's offering a trade, which we can accept and then go c5. And I think I'm slightly better. Maybe very slightly. Could have been better to take and play uh, c5, but... Is he allowing the IQP? Is that what he's trying to say? He's allowing the IQP. Okay, so be it. I don't get like g6, making a luft. And I'm just gonna take my free pawn. Just the guy that's cashing in his free pawn. Take on f2 and we actually get a winning endgame, theoretically speaking. Give me that pawn. Okay, gonna get my rook there, gonna do a little shuffling. This guy's actually like playing fast. Why is he so fast? This guy is a sprinter. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> I can play faster too. Like, not that fast, but faster than my <laughs> average. Okay, I can take that, I think. And he does resign. Oh, he didn't, but he got flagged. So, um, yeah, that is kind of the gameplay in this Fort Knox. I mean, just try to stay solid. Your opponent is going to be like, what the heck is this shitty opening that he's playing against me? I need to beat the crap out of him. And you play kind of solid defense and then you win on the counter attack. I don't know. Let's actually check this game, whether that was the case or not. It felt like I was pretty comfortable at some point, but then also felt like he could have gotten some, some initiative. So we played the Russian roulette, we ended up getting into the normal theory anyways. When bishop e7, uh, could break with c5 here I guess too. I went for this idea with queen a6. Should break with c5, I wasn't sure, I felt like b5 square is a bit weak. Play knight d5 though, which as I was saying is great because we have this pawn. Just imagine I don't play a5, okay? Let's try to do the same thing. Try to do like a memory test. Let's go there. Let's say he plays this. Queen a6 is like pointless, but just to make the point, what was the move? Uh, what, what was he playing? Okay, knight e5, let's say rook fd8, and then he plays like queen b3. And now if I do the same and I get my knight to b4, then there's this super annoying move with a3. And that is why we really like to... Uh, include a5 and a4 on the board so really happy to see it got my knight in there if he plays c4 i'm very comfortable after knights getting into b4 this position apparently is equal but generally it's slightly better for black and played queen d1 i went b5 yeah still should break with c5 try to open up the position into the center now I defend it this way. Oh, he missed bishop g5. That would have been a sexy move. Watch this. Because if I take, he has this. And then queen e6, I'm assuming. Yeah. That would have been a nice idea. Still, I have like two minors, but with rook e8 coming in, it looks pretty ugly. I have to play h6. Plays knight g4. We repeat. He tries to beat me. I go queen b6. 
Okay, we get like an equal position. So we trade everything and then after c5. c5 was bad. Should have played rook d5, but here once we got in the IQP, guess who's playing for a win suddenly? The guy who just repeated and endgame was pretty straightforward. We do get the black pieces once again and against e4, we will be defending the fringe. We will stay true to this opening and he does play knight e2, meaning that we're going to be taking on e4. And then idea is to follow it up with the fourth Nox variation. And uh, he does play with queen e2, which means he might be looking for the tricky lines with knight f6, knight uh, e to g5. So let's see. Because if he does, that is actually very tricky. Looks like he's not. And uh, there's like a very dangerous line if he goes knight g5 and you play like the seemingly normal bishop e7. Then he can actually take on f7 and followed by the other knight coming into g5. White is getting a winning attack, so the trick to play against that variation is, uh, in fact, to just meet knight g5 with bishop takes on f3, and I think black is actually quite solid there, have some analysis, but uh, yeah, it's important to know the first move of the line, and I think you can be good on your own then. So against this, I'm just going to be going bishop to e7, he does take, I think I'll trade this way, uh, yeah, the more trades we do the easier our game will be i think and now we just got like a dream version of this because bishop f3 is like a big threat if he goes bishop e4 yeah we just managed to trade like a lot of pieces yeah this is really no uh, yeah quite a dream position for the line i think i'll just go short there's no need to go long castle there's no like any crazy attack coming even though he could try one i think yeah it's definitely a very fine position for us to, to play. Could go queen g6, like if I really want to trade queens, hitting this and also that. I think that's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm fine playing the end games. And generally, you should also be fine playing the end games while going into the fort knox. Does go there, saying that he wants me to take. But, uh, okay, let's uh, let's test it. Let's test his attacking skills. Just gonna go queen h3. I think I can go check and then just play g6. Pawn is like very solid. I don't really see an obvious way for him to break. And I have a pretty solid position. That's play queen f1, which is far from being an impressive move. I'm gonna go queen f4. If rook there, we can take the knight. Does go rook d3. He wants something like this, I'm assuming. I think we could like break with c5. That is one of like the key ideas. And on that we just play queen f6, keeping an eye on the rook. If he goes queen h3, I might just defend with knight f8. Could also take, because rook h7 is not like... Yeah, the biggest deal ever. I think that's, that's actually the move. I might be crazy, but I think that's how we should play. Combine it with e5 then. Okay, he does not take on h7, which is interesting. If, if he was taking, had this idea. Takes with a rook. Now I'm happy playing this move because there's no like knight coming into e5. And if we trade pieces, I mean, sure, let's go ahead. I'm up a pawn. I really want to get into the end games. And yeah, let's see how we will continue. Let's play b3. I'm wondering whether we can get in e5 or not. I think we can. Seems easier to trade though and play rook d8 if he does stick with the rook. Because if he takes with the knight, then I had pawn on f2 to capture. Okay, gonna trade everything. Gonna trade queens if allowed. Going to centralize. Time to bring the knight back into the game. Maybe get it to like e4. Yeah, knight c5. Dominating his knight. Okay, knight into e4. This is big threat. King b2, there's queen d4. That's fine, queen e3. I think we need to just defend that one. Okay, I think e5. Maybe there is f3, perhaps. I'll try to trade off his knight. If knight d7, we can just defend. Just gonna play e5 now. Idea is to get like this. Oh, I've missed e4. I think I've had e4 in the previous move. That was so bad. I rushed with the check because I'm in time trouble. 
I missed a free win there. Could have gotten an ID4 maybe as well. No, I, now I blundered. God! Ah, this was... This hurts so bad. This hurts so bad. Like, it was such a clean game and... Yeah, I mean, should have gone in this position. <laughs> Just push it, you know? Just go E4. And yeah, he has to resign. Yikes, that was so bad. But, um... I think actually the way this game was played was was interesting and should have been fine. Like, let's actually check it. So we went for, yeah, like a pretty okay opening, nothing really interesting happening. I went c6, sure you can castle long, you can do pretty much anything. I like this idea to go c6 and castle short. He went through q1 and I played queen g6. He's supposed to go for like the end games, but on queen e2, yeah, this is. It really felt like he shouldn't be getting enough play for the pawn, because I can establish this structure with like g6, and yeah, it's gonna be like really, really hard to break this pawn wall over there. And I'm, I am up a pawn like at the end of the day. Brought my rook into the game. Everything looked okay. Yeah, breaking in the center is supernatural. And yeah, here taking was best, as I was saying. Like, if he takes, I've also considered knight c5. But to me, e5 it looked even better. But it's apparently worse after knight d2. He's getting multiple threats. Because on knight c5, rook is now coming into f3. And I can just resign there. So I had the right feeling, I just had like a poor execution because like knight c5 would have been better. And if rook goes back, then we can break with d3. And now this queen is doing a great job in defending the critical square while also uh, playing a major role in the counterattack. So now black would be completely winning, which is uh, yeah quite instructive, I think. And if we go back after he took, I could have gone e5. That is very interesting, idea being that on rook d7 I can take and then at the end of the line we don't take the knight, like that's what I've seen during the game, but we have a better move which is rook d8, wow I forgot about that one, and he has issues with the back rank and if after e5 he does not grab my knight, well we just call it like a really uh, yeah, nice tempo, we open the default, knight maybe coming into e6 and now it's just really winning, knight f8 though should still be Ah, uh, yeah, quite okay. And the endgame is slowly winning. Only if in that position we would have... Yeah, I think everything was played like properly. And yeah, just go E4 in this position. And uh, night drops. I only had 15 seconds left though against a minute. So uh, I went for the check. Like, uh, yeah, all the folks who do. And then it wasn't really that winning anymore. So, yeah, that was, I think, pretty much it about this game. I think uh, I managed to spoil, like, a very instructive game. Because, yeah, that's pretty much how you um, easily equalize in this Fort Knox variation. And it's, like, really effective in the French because it works both against knight d2 and against knight c3 as well. So it's not like your opponent plays knight c3. Against this, you go bishop to b4. But against knight d2, you can no longer go bishop b4 because there is c3. So I think it's just like a nice way to simplify this opening and get rid of one of your main issues, which is the light squared bishop. So we do get the third black game in a row and we will uh, give the French defense another shot. And we do see another Fort Knox and I'm really loving that we actually get to play this variation because I think it's really one of the uh, main lines that you should be focused on learning if you're trying to like master this sort of basic line of the French because really um, yeah the exchange line or yeah I'm what or the other side lines are not really that critical but it's really important to know how to actually uh, play this position so just gonna be playing bishop e7 breaking the pin and I've noticed like a lot of folks just doing that and now trade everything on f6 which again gives black like a very easy game once again and yeah i mean what to say it's like really easy to make a draw the interesting part is when i'm trying to actually play it for a win because obviously when everything gets traded on f6 you can just like 
place all your miners on the D file and wait. <laughs> so there's no way your opponent can penetrate your position. But uh, yeah, I mean, when I have an equal position, I, I like to go for more generally. And I think that's the uh, right approach if you're trying to like get better. So he does take. Uh, taking with the bishop is fine as well. Going c6, playing with knight against bishop. But there's like no need to go for that necessarily in, in this particular position. So I think I'll just castle. I could also play like uh, knight f6. I think I'm liking knight f6. Let's see. Like short tr trading is like very simple. You play c6, knight f6, castle. Rook is coming into d8. You have a very equal position. But um, yeah, I think maybe we could perhaps try to create some play with this bishop on the long diagonal. And uh, yeah, in order to do that, uh, well, I could castle, but I, I'd like to keep uh, yeah, a little bit of flexibility for my king. I'll just start pushing the h pawn now. Idea is to get it all the way to h3, lengthen the diagonal for, for that bishop. And he might be looking forward to push f5. I think that's his idea. But okay, I'll just play g6, stopping it completely, and yeah, at least in some positions he could have played f3, blocking my bishop, but now, I mean, yeah, what can I say, I can just take that, and I'm up a free pawn, I can castle, now he also opened up the g file for my rook, so this is gonna be quite a disaster. Let's just give up the rook, I... <laughs> I will accept it, what can I do? King will hide really nicely on f8 and he does just resign. So, I mean, <laughs> my opponent literally lost his mind against this h5 move. He saw it and he was like, oh no, alpha zero. And he just went f4 and just uh, gifted all the pieces. So yeah, what can I say? Uh, we'll take those and we do actually get a win. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, you can check out another one from the uh, same series or if you perhaps are trying to look for a weapon with the white pieces you can check out the london system video that will uh, pop out on the screen so with that being said i'd like to thank you for watching and i will see you around the channel take care